Good evening. Welcome to Grandma's Attic Music Review. I'm so happy to be back in your living room again. It's really nice of you to invite us in every Saturday night to um, share the music that comes here. Um, tonight we have a very special guest. Um, she's been in and out and around New London, but she's living in the city and she's here on a special journey and she's got some really cool music to share with you. She's got a beautiful voice, a very unique way of sharing, and I'd like you to welcome into your living room, Miss Liz Delise. Just a little girl, so I might get eaten a lot. Well, you don't know what I've been told. All the mysteries that are due to unfold. September 25. It was so easy mm, with Portland inside. We drove home and scattered up and down the coast. 
What do you call a memory if it haunts you like a ghost? Sure, we miss you, oh, oh, but we're doing all right. All right. Outside the gates I'm lost But inside I'm misfit and worn out and strange They returned us to the world Though we'd been missing, no, not much had changed Can I sleep till noon? At least kill some time My dreams are all too real In the morning light Too thick for months or years Well, it's really all the same could I forget the way you said my name? I'll blame timing for the fog in my eyes. Well, I don't know much to fate. You see, I have this hunch that our choices are the gods to which we offer prayers and such. But in my fortune, I was told I'm not wise. Cool your jets, kid. Not all secrets and lies. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, I'm so happy to be here on Grandma's Attic. Um, the first song is called Meat from Bone, and the second one is called The Gates, and you can find them both on my Bandcamp page. Uh, it's a little demo of three songs that I put out. Um, this next song is on the EP that I just released um, at the end of last summer. Uh, it's called To and Fro, and all the songs on the EP are based on stories that I gathered as an undergraduate student at Connecticut College using a research grant. I went over to Portland, Oregon, and I um, spent time with people who call themselves street kids, and they choose to live on the street. And so um, this song is about um, one young woman in particular who went by the name of Starfire. It's called Starfire. It's tiresome working nine to five But on Portland streets You come alive Life sure gets tiresome watching in Spain
county your father's too ill but you're scared to be alone so you can't sit still well, mom was a drinker will her fate be yours without your man you'll lose yourself on these northwest shores also on the EP. It's called Strangers and uh, it's been getting a bit of airplay uh, around North America including on um, New London Zone WCNI um, and it's also on the EP. Mom went looking for the dad I never had. Mary in the desert, lost a burning man. Three months of higher education, then the rainbow family came. Traded my books for a backpack, skipped down and changed my name. Never felt I quite fit anywhere it seemed until this family of strangers, a company of dreams. No matter how many times I leave, Portland always calls. The strangers are strangers with faces. I know a family of strangers with every town it grows And these cities are perfect Man's most valiant child Why else would we come back to smoggy streets and skies? See them passing Wary-eyed and bleak Can there be no breaching these walls that make us weak? So I play on a quiet melody. If they'd only stop time, perhaps they'd finally see that no matter how many times I leave, Portland always calls. The strangers are strangers with faces unknown. A family of strangers with every town it grows. And these cities are perfect. Man's most valiant child. Why else would we come back to smoggy streets and sky? 
This next song is called Werewolf. It has nothing to do with the Twilight series, although maybe I would get some press if it did. Um, I, it's, it's a love song, but I wasn't in love when I wrote it.
Just give me some time with you Gosh, that was so much fun. <laughs> I usually ask people to howl along, so feel free to howl along at home the next time you hear it. Um, <laughs> you should have told me how to howl. <laughs> we'll do it on Monday. Um, all right, so this next song is called Philadelphia, and um, I recorded it with my band called Camp. Um, and it is about um, figuring out where you're going to live when you're leaving a place you've been for four years where you're in a safe little bubble, AKA college. Um, Shacking up in Brooklyn, although it's sunny where they are. And just to set the balance straight, I think I'll move west. Buy some land and invest. Take it nice and slow. Philadelphia. 
I wish that I could stay, but the winter's too cold for me. The winter's too cold for me. Philadelphia, I wish that I could stay, but the winter's too cold for me. The winter's too cold for me. Thank you so much. Um, let's see. So this next tune I'm going to play, I also recorded with my band camp. It's called Send. Kiss you on the couch Sleepy lips moved heavy mouth And gave good night a try Good night but not goodbye Showing off in case you look my way Though you seldom do Sorry. 
sorry for the burden I'll surely leave behind. Strange indeed to be falling in love with a friend. You'd forgotten how your stomach folds and bends and you're 16 again. Again. Thank you so much. Um, alrighty. Alrighty, let's see. Switch back over to this guy. You got about two more songs for me and then you can come sit and chit chat with me? Sounds great. That sounds awesome. Sounds like a plan. Word from above is that you're incredible. Oh my goodness. People are watching and going, woohoo, she's awesome. Awesome. That's what I like to hear. Well, yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this next song, um, I, I had the uh, great fortune to study abroad in Pune, India, while I was at Connecticut College. And um, I, I went there thinking that I was going to just write and write and write. And I ended up only writing one song while I was there. And it's just, it's just so funny how expectations work like that. But uh, this song is called Oceans. Tables and chairs in the hall Suddenly make me feel small Swimming in maps on the wall Oceans don't seem so big at all And can you feel, can you feel my heart? It's beating Can you feel, can you feel my heart? It's leading you can you feel, can you feel my heart? It's beating Always been beating for you Eight thousand miles it seemed Solidified all of my grandiose dreams Three thousand miles, I thought Would show me who I am and what I am not Can you feel, can you feel my heart? It's beating Can you feel, can you feel my heart? It's leading you Can you feel, can you feel my heart? It's beating it's always been beating for you and Tables and chairs in the hall Tables and chairs in the hall and Can you feel, can you feel my heart? My heart, it's leading you. Can you feel? Can you feel my heart? It's beating. It's always been beating for you. Thank you. Just a a little ditty. Alrighty. Do one more for you and I'll go chat with Grandma Dot. Hey. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so this song is also on the EP. It's called Homeless. It's home slash less. I wanted to emphasize 
Um, <clears throat> I wanted to break apart the word homeless to really get at what it literally means when you say homeless. Um, you know, you're, you're literally lacking a home. And it, that really rung true for me with the street kids because they told me that they had chosen to live on the street. So for them, it didn't really feel like they were homeless, that they were lacking a home because their street was the home and they found home all over the country. So um, I wanted to play with that idea a little bit. But this song, this is about the street kids as well. downtown and shop your local stores keep your money in your town keep your money in your community and we'll all do better hi hi it's so good to have you here it's this so has been a be long here. time coming haven't mm -hmm. we've been talking about this for a long time yes and it just occurred to me camp played at the I am fest two years ago I think it was two years ago oh my gosh and I'll never be it was my birthday <gasps> happy and birthday well, it was then. <laughs> and and I was like so excited about you guys, and then I could never find you. Oh no! Because I was going to have you guys on on my radio show, and I was so excited about what you guys did on stage, and you were oh. also. It, it was unique. Thank you. <laughs> that was the experience. Awesome. I can't, so that's really cool. Now the kids that you played with in camp were all Connecticut College students, yes. right? Yes, yes, every and single one. The the dance instructor was there that day with some of his dance students. Yes. And I was up on the bleachers just dancing and having a blast. And he said to his girls, he says, "You girls need to learn to be that free with your dance moves, because I was just doing what I do. To mu when music goes, oh I yeah, can, you can. Yeah, and yeah, I'm the same way. So um, 
this to and fro is an amazing CD. Thank you. Um, the fact that you're giving the proceeds, what is it? All, um, wh how much it's, of it? It's a portion. I haven't determined yet. When, when it comes a year's time, which is this coming August at the very end of the month, I'm going to go back and assess and, and give as much as I can yep. to them. All right. Cover your costs and then... Exact, that's yeah. exactly what yeah, I'm yeah. going to do. Yeah. Um, you've had a lot of help with this, too. <laughs> Absolutely. Tons. So how many of these people that have the last name Delise are actually... Um, they're, they're, your dad's here, is that Lewis? Yes, that's my dad. Um, both of my brothers are on there, John and Jim Delise. Uh -huh. And uh, my mom is on there, Elena Marino. And um, my nieces, two little Delises, are on there. Cool. Um, pretty, I have pretty much my entire immediate family on the first song, singing nice. the chorus. Yeah, so nice. it's a good time. It was really fun. I bet. And it, you do, you thank everybody in it. What gives you such a passion for street kids? and street people in general because it's a hard it's it's a it's a third world country in this country the street people yeah because i've worked with them also yeah and so what gives you such a passion for them well i think these young people in particular um the first time i went to portland i i kind of went there on a whim i i fell in love with the city when i found out that my two favorite bands at the time, The Shins and The Decemberists, came from Portland. And Modest Mouse, I was like, oh my god, I have to go there, of course. So I found out two friends were driving out there, and I, I was like, can I please come with you? I'll find a job, and I sort of found a job, but eventually what I ended up doing was quitting my canvassing job and playing music on the street corner. I, I was busking all summer yeah, to make yeah. my pocket money, and um, I met this young man, and he just, um, he and another kid who had a, a kitten sitting on his head, in his like <laughs> mass of black hair, um, they invited me to go to the a waterfront. Living a living, cool. adorable little kitten. <laughs> they invited me to go to the waterfront with them. They were hanging out with some friends, and I'm thinking like you know two or three people. We get there and it's it's mobbed. I mean there are I want to say like 50 or so street kids. There's this whole community of people there, and my eyes were so open. You know I'm from the suburbs of Philadelphia, right, right. and the only um, street culture I had experienced was you know going into New York or Philadelphia, mm -hmm. and it, it looked very different than what I was seeing. These are people Absolutely. my age. They're they look healthy. You know they're carrying these big old backpacks. They've got dogs, and I, I was perplexed and amazed. And I I started, got to talking to some of them, and it turned out they they told me they had chosen to be there. Now, when I went back the following summer, it came to light that a lot of them came from maybe not ideal home circumstances right. or they just didn't feel happy there. So it was a choice, but difficult circumstances, sometimes we choose unexpected things. And so that's really what intrigued me about this street subculture in particular, because we never think of homelessness as being something that you would ever choose. I mean, not outright. No, I found in working with several street people um, in the Norwich area that mm -hmm. several of the people had been offered different ways of mm. living and they'd chosen to live wow. the way that they lived it's amazing. because they didn't want to be controlled and they didn't and want And that control. is the crux of it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. they didn't want to um, they they wanted to <clears throat> live underneath the rules and regulations yep. that they made, not the ones that the government or their parents or their spouses yes, absolutely. or some of them the wars Different, coming back from different mm -hmm. wars and they didn't want to have to relate with that anymore. Yeah, so, it makes total sense. Yeah. I mean, trauma will make you choose the unexpected, yeah, for sure. Yeah, it really will. And yeah. they're some of the nicest people. Oh my gosh. I mean, these these young people, I, I was only there for a summer doing this research, so I, I call it a mini ethnography. Um, my advisor graciously calls it ethnographic research. He's a great guy, Anthony Gresh. Um, but I, I called a mini ethnography because I was only there for like three months. Right. Um, and I, I spoke with six... Three months is actually a long time to spend with street people. It is. It is I, I, I suppose so. And um, I, it, I ended up speaking with six people in particular. And um, they were so gracious with their stories. I mm -hmm. mean, it was just like, you know, I, I was so nervous to ask those personal things and they were like oh yeah of course yeah let me talk to you they were excited you know they wanted to share it um, they wanted to share their perspectives and ideals and and I really found neat. that they they do want to share because they feel misunderstood and they exactly. feel um, forgotten it, forgotten oh, absolutely I mean 
that song I just played, Homeless, I'd say the public eye is blind at best, you know, because if they're not, if they're not saying something mean to you, they're just ignoring you. Right. Well, they're not, it's not just that they're um, turning a blind eye, they don't want to see it. They oh, no. choose no. not to see well, because what's it, going on. It's representative of something wrong in our society. To most people, that's what yeah. I found when I would speak to you know, and and I, I feel that way too. I look at that. I'm like, we live in this wealthy, prosperous nation. How could this happen? Like you said, a third world country in in a first world country. You know, so it's there it's are bizarre. more abandoned houses than there are homeless people. Mm -hmm. All those homeless people should have homes. Exactly, exactly, and that is why this research was interesting to me, and I would like to. I want to do something with it. I don't know what yet, but at least give back to this organization outside in, in Portland and send them a couple of CDs and see So what do you happens. consider yourself a musician or a researcher in sociology? <laughs> definitely a musician. Um, I study anthropology at Connecticut College, but I, I'm definitely a musician first and foremost. Um, I think I would need many more years of schooling to consider myself an anthropologist, although I'm still very fascinated by the work that's being done. and. Um, I don't know, I, I think that street culture in particular is a pretty untapped area in, in sociology and anthropology. There are, there's a lot of statistics, but it doesn't go very deep. And I think that that could be a really exciting thing for people to explore. I don't know, maybe I'll go to grad school, but for right now I'm doing the music thing. For right thing. now you're doing <laughs> music and we're all really happy that you're doing that <laughs> because your music, music is so much fun. Now one of the songs that's not on here that I really, really, really love is Werewolf. I actually oh, recorded you. it and it's already up it's already up on Facebook. Oh wow. So cool. um, I didn't record the whole thing, only a few minutes, so people are still gonna have to find you to get yes, like, the whole absolutely. werewolf thing. So where can people find you? So you can go to my website, which is just lizdelise.com, and then um, I still need to kind of add some of my older music on there and newer music. This album is the only one that you can find on there, but if you want to find my other music, you can go to lizdelise.bandcamp.com, and then if you want to listen to Camp's music, uh -huh. are you ready? You can go to campbandcamp.bandcamp.com. Thank Say you. that again. Camp band Slowly, camp listen, listen guys. This is how you can really find this band camp was fun. They were a lot of fun to watch. So check this out. Go ahead. So it's campbandcamp.bandcamp.com. <laughs> I'm gonna go there because you well, it didn't connect for me until you said that. Oh my that gosh! That's who you were. Cool. And 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 it just it's amazing to me because I really really liked you guys then, and I was dancing big time to you guys' music. Awesome. And somebody said to me that you guys didn't even really like go out and play much and that you ended up at this, at the I Am Fest, which yeah. is a huge festival in yeah, London. Yeah, we were really New London. excited. We were really excited about it. Because it was big um, when we were students at Con. It was always, I saw some terrific bands there when I was a student. And um, there's a lot of great music yeah. in this area. Yeah, when we were really excited. I mean, a goal of mine, we want to, we're gearing up to play more and more shows. I need to talk to the guys about it, but I think they'll be excited. You have to let me know. I will. Because I, I know places you can play. That would be great. <laughs> you heard it here. <laughs> now, how did how did um, the I Am Fest people find you? Did you guys submit a... a, a yeah, we submitted. I think we submitted... I to Sean? submitted their Sonic bids or something like really? that. Really? Yeah, but we had known Sean. We had played at the Oasis a couple times. Okay. So we knew Sean, and um, he was always really generous and sweet with us. He's such he's such a great music encourager. Yes, you absolutely. Know, on top of being kind of a New London personality, yes. so to speak. Um, there's a few of those, you know, the people in, in New London. Yeah. So you're looking at coming back around here yes. sometime, maybe in September or absolutely. whatever, whatever. Um, I hope that when you do, maybe you'll have your band back together a little bit and uh -huh. come here. Absolutely. And um, I want to know when you're writing. Let's let's do some real interviewing here. That sounds good. Just talking stuff. That sounds when good. you're sitting down and, and you're writing a song, do you actually write a song because you make yourself sit down and write, mm -hmm. or do you write a song because all of a sudden your head is saying, "I have to write this song." It's both. It's definitely both. I think. Um, my dad always says that 
the best songwriters write every day. You know, Lennon and McCartney sat down and they wrote together every day. And yeah. I mean, and they they did all right. You know, just kidding. Yeah, they did. Um, <laughs> nice they were in what, what band? Yeah, my Beatles lunchbox over there. Um, but for me, often it, it's like if I have a thought that is. I guess if it's if it's an important thought, it's like it's like write it down, write it down, sing it into your phone, write it down, do something, and I I my brain won't be quiet about it, and that's when it's like okay, I better put that down. And if I don't, I'll. Oh, one of my favorite musicians, um, Andrew Bird, said something about um, how he doesn't ever record um, his ideas when he has them right away because he's like, it's, if it's a good one, I'll remember it, and I really liked that. Uh -huh. um, at the same time. We, our brains take in like a million things per second or some humongous number that I can't that we can't even conceptualize. Right. So I do like to record little ideas because you right. never know when you'll when you'll finish it. You know, like the other day I was in the car and I had an idea and I recorded it and and I might not come back to it for a couple months, but then but then I also might and, and when I do I'll be happy I recorded it because I'll have these these elements plus the new elements and right. you never know. You're always you're constantly in flux. You're always becoming, so I like to be prepared for what we all are becoming. always becoming. Exactly, and people that recognize that there's a lot of people that don't get that, you know. Yeah, the people don't recognize the fact that we should always be growing, and if we stopped growing, we're pretty much dead. It's not even possible. We can't right. even help it. Right. Yeah. Well, it, unless you don't recognize it, you Ooh, know what I mean. Yeah. If you yeah. don't recognize Absolutely. it, then, and so that's a good thing. Tell me why you wrote Werewolf. I, I just okay. love that song. Thank you. I, I really like it. I actually just, um, my boyfriend and I helped each other record um, live versions of our songs, and I, I did that one in my hallway. Uh -huh. So that'll be up on YouTube soon. Um, so Werewolf, I, I was living at my dad's in South Jersey. I had just graduated, and I was feeling really lonely. It's like all my friends were here and there and everywhere, and I... I just, I was lonely and that lonely feeling, it makes you, I was like, man, I just want to be in love. Like, I just want to feel close to somebody here, like close to it, you know, like that, that kind of wanting. And so I, and then I was um, driving home from, I started going to open mics in mm -hmm. the area because I just needed to meet people. Cause I'm not actually from South Jersey, but I was living there when I graduated. Yeah. Um, so I was driving home and I, I parked at my dad's and I looked outside and the moon was just breathtaking and it was just so moving and I was like oh my god this like and I went in and I wrote a song about it because I was like this is amazing you know like I need to write a song for this amazing feat of nature so I wrote that and then you know as as things go um I ended up meeting my boyfriend like pretty shortly after that and we've been together for like See? two years it so it's exactly universe. exactly that's what my mom always <laughs> says put it out there Put it out there and it will happen. And, yeah. and I was raised very Christian, so I have all that Christian ideology, but sure. I'm learning that there's other ways of looking at things. And oh, I've learned absolutely. that as long as you speak the positive, the positive is always out there. Yes. And I call that God, but I don't think that everybody has to. And I, no, I'm, finding so that, I'm finding that it's really all about giving. And is more the more we give, the more we get. Yeah. Even without asking for it, sometimes. Yeah. And um, absolutely. Having having music be able to be so giving, music is such a healing and strengthening medium. It's mm -hmm. the only one that does all those things. Yeah. You it's know. Amazing. Where do you see yourself in five years? Oh my gosh, that's like that's like a word document on my computer. Five year plan. Um, well, it's also a normal question for being interviewed. Absolutely, good to know. Okay, okay. remember this. Yes. Okay. <laughs> well, I. Where do I see myself? I see myself touring. I, I want to do a cross country tour. Mm -hmm. So that's definitely a, a five year goal. Perhaps even sooner than five years. I want to. I want to tour across the country. Um, I'd like to. I'd like to tour around the world too. I'd like to have a band, uh, like besides camp. You know, maybe it's those same guys. Yeah, but yeah. Um, I'd like to have um, other other people that travel with me and and are into my music and will add to it and make it, you know, even greater than my vision. And um, and I, and I do. I want to give back in some way. You know, I see this EP as as the beginning of combining social action with 
with music or even just, just raising social awareness, um, just putting the bug in people's ears. I think that that is, that's where I'd, I'd like my music to be. You know, I want it, I want it to give back as music just does because that's music's nature, like you right, said, but exactly. also give back on that other level of like, oh, wow, I didn't think about that. Maybe I should go talk to these people and then just connecting people. I love, I'd like in five years to have people be connected because of my well, music and doing important my, stuff. One of, one of the biggest things that I say besides the whole local shopping thing yeah. is be the change that you want to see. Yeah. And you're doing that. Thanks. And thank you so much. And thank with you. that, I have to ask you to take us out with some music. I love Thank you to. so much for coming. Thank I'm you. so excited about your music. And quick, 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 yes. tell people where to get it. Um, LizDelise.com. LizDelise.com. Thank you so much. Take us out with the song. Thank you. I shall. That is Liz Delise. She's going to take us out with the song. And until next week, bye-bye. God bless. And have a really great week. This song is called Where.